Hi again. Welcome to Lesson 8 on Designing Database Solutions with Microsoft SQL Server. For today's topic, you are going to learn how to modify data stored in your database. Aside from SQL Select Statement, we will explore on the rest of SQL Server commands to manipulate data, commonly known as DML or Data Manipulation Language. You will learn the use of insert, update, and delete commands as well as the output clause used in the insert and delete statements. To demonstrate this, I'll be working with this LabActivity8 database, and in it, I already have created two empty tables for us to work with. The persons table consists of a person ID of type int as the primary key, the last name and the first name of type nvarcar30. I also have the students table with student number of type car11 as the primary key, it also has a last name, first name, and degree program of type nvarcar30. The year level of type int is nullable, same as with the graduating field of type bit and birthday of type date, both nullable. As before, we used to edit top 200 rows to enter and modify records very much similar to a spreadsheet. Even though we use this visual environment to modify our records, you must know that there is an underlying SQL commands being executed that actually perform these operations. These are the insert, update, and delete commands. In addition to this, in an actual production environment, you don't expect that users will open your database tables in edit mode and start typing records. Even if you are the database administrator, you are not supposed to modify records directly here. Ideally, you have one or more front-end application like web, desktop, or mobile apps that users can use to gain access to the database systems to do some data manipulation. In that way, your database tables are limited from a direct access and only allowed users or apps can modify the content. To start, I'll open a new query window and select everything from table students you see that this table does not contain any record yet. To insert a record, I'll type insert into, then followed by the table name, students. Inside this parenthesis, I can specify the fields of this table that I want to insert a data. And suppose I want every field, take note of the data types. I'll specify all the fields here separated by comma, student number, last name, first name, degree program, year level, graduating, and birthday. The values is used to specify all the data that correspond to each field we specified here. It should be in the proper sequence with correct data type. Say student number is 2019-012345, last name Go, first name Joed, degree program is BSCPE, a year level of 2, and then 0 means not graduating, and a random birthday. When I execute this, you'll see a message one row affected, which denotes a successful insert. And if I check the content of this student's table, you can see the newly inserted record. We can also verify it here in the edit top 200 rows. I'll right-click and select Execute SQL. There are several ways to use this insert statement. The into keyword is optional, and I can simply omit it. Then, inside the parentheses, it is not required to type in all the fields. As you can see, the year level, graduating, and birthday fields can be null. And in this case, I have an option not to put any values to these fields as I insert a new record. So, I am only required to supply four values for the specified fields. I'll copy-paste this SELECT statement and execute this query. Notice that this student record number 2 has been inserted successfully, with these fields as null. I'll do another insert. But this time, if you don't specify the fields that you want to insert, then you are required to provide values for all the fields. 
even if there are fields that allow null value. Meaning, I need to provide a student number, last name, first name, degree program, year level graduating, and birthday values. This must be in proper order as it appears in the table structure. I'll execute it, and student God Jewel is inserted. Notice that it appears first in the record. This has something to do with the primary key that is by default, SQL Server Database Engine configures it as clustered index. In effect, it sorts and stores these data rows based on this primary key. I'll explain this further on a separate topic in some later videos. Now, let's try inserting a new record, but this time, I'll only specify the values from student number, last name, first name, degree program, year level, and graduating. I will not include this birthday field. Even though this field allow null value, once I execute this code, notice this error message saying, column name or number of supplied values does not match the table definition. This simply means if we do not explicitly specify the fields to be inserted, then the insert statement will require us to supply all the values specified in the table definition. And as you can see, the record is not inserted. Now, let's work with this person table. I'll double check the data types of these fields. So, I'll put a value of 101 for the ID, and then Interino Andre for the last name and first name. I'll execute this, and we have a successful insert. You can also do multiple inserts like this. Insert person, and then in the values, all the values you want to specify, and separate each data row by comma. In this example, I'll insert three records simultaneously. I'll execute this, and the three records have been inserted successfully. We can also combine the insert statement with the select statement. Say I only want to retrieve the last name and first name from table persons, and then filter it where the person ID is 101, and it only gives me Interino Andre. Now, I'll add a value for student ID field, then degree program of BSCP, and year level of 1. I'll execute this, and we have the result set for this select query as expected, and now, we can use the result of the select statement and use it as values in our insert statement. Here, I need to specify what fields these values will be supplied to. So, the result of this select statement will be inserted and supplied to the student number, last name, first name, degree program, and year level fields of the student's table. You see one row affected as I execute this. And you can see, Interino Andre has been successfully inserted in the student's table. Updating a record means changing the values stored in one or more fields of one or more records of a given table. Consider this student's table. If I want to update the year level of student Joed Go from 2 to a new value of 3, then I have to say, update students, specify which field I want to update by using the set command, and assign a new value. If I execute this right away, all records will be updated to a new year level of 3. Unless you want to affect all the records, make sure to include the WHERE clause so that only the specific records you want to update will be affected. 
and I only want to update this record with student number of 2019-012345. I'll execute this, and the year level of this record has been updated to 3. Let's try another update wherein more than one row will be affected. Say I want to update the values of the field degree program and set it to BS Computer Engineering, and this will affect all the records where the degree program is BS CPE. And when I execute this code, Observe what will happen to these two records. Both are updated. We can also update multiple fields. Say I want to update this record to a new degree of BSIS and supply the rest of the null values. We can do this by simply setting each field value separated by comma. Again, I need to specify what record will be affected by this update. When I execute this, one row is affected, and this record is now updated with new values. Aside from this, we can also do multiple specific update without using the WHERE clause. Say, I want to change all instances of BS Computer Engineering to BSCP again, then using the replace function, we can simply supply three arguments. First, the field that we want to update. Second, the value we are looking to update. And the third, the replacement value. The first two arguments serve as the WHERE clause. Let's execute this one. And we have a successful update to these two records using the replace function. To delete a record, you can use the delete command like this. Delete from, and then the table name. Similar to the update statement, make sure to include the WHERE clause if you do not intend to delete all records in your table. There is no undo button here, so be careful when using these commands. Say I want to delete person ID 104 and person 104 has been deleted. The from keyword is optional in the delete statement and I can do the same thing like this. In effect, all records with first name of Mia will be deleted and we only have one record affected. Using the delete command without the WHERE clause will not delete the actual table, but it will delete all the records in that table. So be careful when you have delete statements in your query. Even if you make it as a comment, it can still be executed accidentally. I have a separate topic on triggers and audit trails wherein I'll be explaining how to protect your data properly. Now, there is another useful clause that you can use when inserting or deleting records in a table. The output clause allows you to return any information from each row affected by the insert, update, or delete statements. This return value can be used in many ways such as inserting it to another table or table variable. And to demonstrate this, I'll modify the design of this person's table and set its primary key identity specification to yes. The identity seed is 101, auto incremented by one. I'll save this. And suppose I want to insert a new person's last name and first name. The values will be Kent Clark. Though this is good to be executed, but I'm going to use an output clause here to return field or fields from the inserted record. Say I want to return the auto-generated ID that will be assigned to this new record after a successful insert. Once I execute this, Kent Clark has been inserted in the person's table and another result is returned containing only the person ID of this recent insert will make a good use of this return value of this output clause in the succeeding lectures. 
I'll duplicate this code and try to output multiple fields from the inserted record. This next person is Wayne Bruce. So I'll execute this. And here is the new person record. And this is the output value produced by this statement. In addition to output inserted, we also have output deleted. Say I want to delete a person with the last name of Wayne. And if I want to know the ID and the first name of this deleted person, I can say output deleted that person ID, comma, deleted that first name. And when I execute this, here is the return value from the output deleted statement. And Bruce Wayne is already deleted in the person's table. Practice these DML commands because this will be very important in our future topics when we start creating stored procedures, transactions, and triggers. Up next, we'll explore some of the common built-in functions used in SQL Server. Again, thanks for watching. If you learned something of value here, please click the like and subscribe button for more programming tutorials. This is Joe Edgo and hope to see you in the next video lecture.